Hi, welcome to Five Sigma, the standard for discovery in particle physics. In particle physics, we test hypotheses about how the universe works by measuring quantities like particle masses or decay rates. Potentially, measurements of these quantities can lead to discoveries about the universe. For example, as yet unknown physical processes may cause some particle to decay more rapidly or in different ways than what is currently predicted by the standard model of particle physics. And sometimes new particles are discovered. If you hear about results in particle physics or in other fields, you might hear the result described in terms of some number of sigma or you might hear that some observation has, or has not, reached the five sigma threshold for discovery. In this video, we'll talk about what these terms mean. We'll discuss the criteria particle physicists use to conclude whether or not the result of a measurement should be called a discovery. In order to do this, it will help if we talk a bit about the idea of Gaussian error bars. We will try to review the most important points here, but if you'd like more background information, there are a few other relevant videos on this channel that you might be interested in. This video will be a bit easier to understand if you're somewhat familiar with the Gaussian or normal distribution. Especially useful would be the videos Features of the Gaussian or Normal Distribution, Parts 1 and 2. You can find these and other possibly helpful videos in the Gaussian Statistics playlist. The ideas in this video will also be easier to understand if you also watch the videos in the playlist mini course on error bars, measurements, and decision analysis. You may wish to watch those videos before proceeding here, or you might want to use this video as a jumping off point that gives some scientific contexts for those other videos. Okay, let's get started. First, let's review what a Gaussian distribution is. So a Gaussian distribution, also called a normal distribution, is described mathematically by the formula shown here. It is a function of x and describes a bell-shaped peak. It contains two parameters, mu and sigma. The peak is centered at mu and sigma controls the width of the peak. For example, here we plot two Gaussians with mu equal to zero. Note that both are centered at x equals zero. The narrow one in red has sigma equal to one and the wider one has sigma equal to two. That's shown in light blue. Now let's say we measure some quantity x. x is some observable like the mass of a particle the distance to a quasar, or the wavelength of some radiation. We'll call the true value of x, x true. You measure x and obtain your measured value, x measured. But measurements have uncertainties. So when you perform your measurement, you probably will not obtain the result x measured equals x true. Let's imagine that your measurement errors are Gaussian distributed. This means that if the measurement were repeated many, many times and all of the measurements were completely independent, that the measured values x measured would fall around the true value x true with the numbers of measurements falling into particular ranges determined by a Gaussian distribution. Let's see how this works. Let's imagine that x true equals 649.2 and the measurement uncertainty was 
then the measured values x measured would be distributed as a Gaussian around mu equals 649.2 with the width of the Gaussian sigma equal to 8.33. And such a Gaussian is shown at the right. Now first, let's mention a couple of quick points. While we've plotted this function for values of x measured between 600 and 700, the function actually extends from minus infinity to plus infinity. And the area under the Gaussian curve and above the x-axis is equal to 1. To find the probability that a particular measurement gives a value for x measured between two given values, we look at the area under the curve between those values. For example, the probability for a certain measurement to return a value of x measured between 640 and 650 is equal to the area under the curve between x measured equals 640 and x measured equals 650. Here we show that area in blue. So here the measurement uncertainty was 8.33. This is reflected in the value of sigma, which determines the width of the Gaussian, so sigma equals 8.33 we can ask the probability that the result of a specific measurement falls within one sigma of the central value. The probability that the result of a particular measurement falls within one sigma of the central value is approximately 68.3%. In this case, that means that the probability that x measured falls within the range 649.2 minus 8.33 and 649.2 plus 8.33 is approximately 68.3%. Now, the probability that the result of a particular measurement falls outside this band is 1 minus the probability that it falls inside. So 1 minus 68.3%, which is about 31.7%. Now the probability is half that, approximately 15.9%, that the result of the measurement falls above this band, so in the white area underneath the curve on the right-hand side, and also the probability is about 15.9% that the result of the measurement will fall below in the white area under the curve on the left-hand side. Similarly, the probability that a particular value of x measured falls within 2 sigma of the central value is approximately 95.4%. The probability it falls outside this band is approximately 4.6%. So 2.3% that it falls above the blue band and 2.3% that it falls below the blue band. And the probability that a particular value of x measured falls within 3 sigma of the central value is approximately 99.7%. Okay, now consider the probability of a given measurement returning a value of x measured further away from the central value than 5 sigma. In this example, this means that x measured falls either above 690.9 or below 607.6. ,6. We won't be able to see this in the plot but the probability that a result falls within 5 sigma of the central value is approximately 99.99994%. This means that if you did 10 million of these independent measurements, 
we'd expect only about six of them would give x measured further away from x true than 5 sigma. Three of them would be more than 5 sigma above x true, and three of them would be more than 5 sigma below x true. Put another way, only about one out of every three and a half million measurements would fall more than five sigma above x true, and only about one out of every three and a half million measurements would fall more than five sigma below x true. So the probability that a specific measurement returns a value more than five sigma above or below x true is one over three and a half million, which is approximately three times 10 to the minus seven. So we see that obtaining a measured value x measured more than five sigma away from x true, while possible, is quite rare. Now we're ready to talk about what is meant by a five sigma discovery or observation. Let's say we have two models to explain some physical phenomena. We'll call them model zero and model one. Model zero has passed a wide array of experimental tests and has proven to be a good working hypothesis for explaining a wide range of observations. It's our default hypothesis when making predictions about the universe. Model one, on the other hand, is more speculative. It might be more complicated than model zero, or it might simply be newer. But if we concluded that model one is correct, that would be a significant scientific advance. Now we do an experiment to test these models. We get some experimental results. We will call the hypothesis that our experimental result follows from model zero, hypothesis zero. In statistics terms, hypothesis zero is the null hypothesis. We will call the hypothesis that our experimental result follows from model one, hypothesis one. In statistics terms, it is the alternative hypothesis. Let's look at a quick example of hypotheses zero and one. For example, physicists could be searching for a new particle that has specific characteristics. Let's say that this particle does not exist in the standard model of particle physics, but is thought to exist in a more speculative model. If this new particle exists, they know how it would be produced in particle accelerators. So they do an experiment in which this particle could be produced. However, in this experiment, there are also lots of other particles, which are already known in the standard model, produced at the same time. They must determine whether what they see in their data results from only production of standard model particles, that would be hypothesis zero, or also from particles predicted by the more speculative model, that would be hypothesis one. Okay. Now that we've seen an example, let's get back to the more general case. Now, both hypothesis zero and hypothesis one predict some value for x true. Let's call hypothesis zero's prediction x zero and hypothesis one's prediction x one. We do a measurement and obtain a value x measured. We'll assume our measurement errors are Gaussian distributed with a measurement uncertainty sigma. Let's say that our measured value x measured is at least five sigma away from x zero and is compatible with x one, say within one sigma or maybe two sigma. For concreteness, let's say x measured is five sigma above x zero, and also it's near x one. We said that if hypothesis zero is true, the probability of observing x measured 
at least 5 sigma above x0 is 3 times 10 to the minus 7. In statistics terms, this means that a measured value of x measured, 5 sigma above x0, has a p-value of 3 times 10 to the minus 7. This is a situation in which many physicists would consider the term discovery appropriate. Alternatively, people might say that the result disagrees with hypothesis 0 at the 5 sigma level, or that a discrepancy compatible with hypothesis 1 has been observed at 5 sigma. Okay, so let's look at our previous plot. Let's take x0 to be 649.2 and sigma equal to 8.33. So the 5 sigma band extends up to 690.9. If x measured is found to be 691.2, this disagrees with hypothesis 0 at 5 sigma. Let's also say that x1 is equal to 695.3. Then this is a 5 sigma result compatible with hypothesis 1. Now it's important to note that the 5 sigma criterion doesn't actually make any mathematical statement about how likely hypothesis 1 or hypothesis 0 is to be true. It is only a statement that if hypothesis 0 is correct, the obtained measured value, x measured, was very, very unlikely. Or put another way, while it doesn't say that hypothesis 1 is correct, it does say that if hypothesis 0 is correct, the experimental result was very, very weird. We could also have an instance in which the measured value, x measured, falls at least 5 sigma away from x0, but is also incompatible with x1. In such a case, although the measured result is hard to reconcile with hypothesis 0, physicists would probably be uncomfortable using the term discovery, as it wouldn't be clear what exactly had been discovered. Many would probably argue that more work was needed to ensure there were no problems with the measurement. On a side note, we could imagine a scenario where x measured differed from x0 by at least 3 sigma, but was compatible with hypothesis 1. While this wouldn't qualify as a discovery, some people would consider it evidence for hypothesis 1. Okay, let's make one more note. In everything above, we assumed that measurement uncertainties are Gaussian. What if they're not? In such a case, as long as the uncertainties are well understood, a similar criterion can be used. For example, let's say x measured is far away from x0 in the direction of x1. In this case, if x measured has a p-value of less than 3 times 10 to the minus 7, so that was the p-value of a 5 sigma result in the Gaussian case, that result might also be referred to as a 5 sigma result. Okay, so let's summarize. The term 5 sigma is often used when speaking about discoveries in particle physics. The 5 sigma criterion has become the convention for defining when an experimental result is considered a discovery. Here, we have given a short description of what this means. This will hopefully be of use in understanding new physics developments as they occur.